This is my week three assignment for FTH 212-51915. Today's date is April 7th, 2024, and this is for Dr. Elahi. For this week's assignment, we are to perform a field strip on the PSA dagger that was sent to us. In the field strip, we are gonna go over the sub-assemblies in detail and show how the different sub-assemblies function together. I will start by showing that the firearm is clear with the slide locked to the rear and there's no magazine and it, nothing in the chamber. To do the field strip, the trigger has to be pulled. So with the gun pointing in a safe direction and the gun is clear, I will pull the trigger. And then I will pull the slide to the rear about a quarter of an inch pull the slide lock down and push the slide forward to remove it. With the slide removed from the frame, I'm going to remove the guide rod and recoil spring. Then I'm going to remove the barrel and with the slide, the barrel, the guide rod, the frame and magazine. This is a field strip. The firearm has been field stripped and now I'm going to go over the sub assemblies. We have the slide sub assembly, which consists of the slide, the striker, the safety detent and the back plate, of course, um, and the sights. You have the recoil spring sub assembly, which consists of the recoil spring, and the guide rod, you have the frame sub-assembly, which consists of the trigger housing, the trigger, the slide stop, the sear. Although the barrel is a single piece, it is considered, it can be considered a sub-assembly in itself based on the amount of roles it plays in the cycle of operations. The magazine is also a sub-assembly, which consists of the magazine body, the floor plate, the magazine spring, and the follower. Some of the roles that the sub-assemblies play in this prior arm platform, you can see the striker, which interacts with the sear. It's held by the sear when the slide is pulled to the rear and the firearm is cocked. And you also have the trigger, which interacts with the sear. In the slide sub-assembly, you have the striker, which of course fires the round. You have the safety detent, which stops the striker from moving forward unless it is pressed. The safety is pressed by the bar on the trigger bar. The hump, I guess I'll call it. I know it has a name, but it's slipping my mind right at this moment. When it comes to the Glock platform or the Glock clones, Areas that you would want to look for or look for um, troubles or that could lead to issues or trouble would be the cruciform. You would want to check the cruciform. You would want to check the rails to make sure they are smooth and, you know, free of any birds. The striker, you would want to check the, the safety detent. You would want to check the firing pan protrusion. You would want to check the barrel, the crown of the barrel. You'll want to look inside the barrel. When a customer brings a firearm into the shop, it's good to have a light, some, a bore light of some type. So you could shine a light into the barrel to get a good clear look. You'll want to check the barrel, check the rifling, check the cleanliness of the barrel and the overall condition of the barrel. You want to check the muzzle and the crown of the barrel. You also want to check the locking surfaces of the barrel, as well as the locking surfaces on the slide, which are, it locks at the top. And you also have your locking lugs at the bottom of the barrel, which interact with the locking block on the frame. as you can see. So you want to make so you, you want to check your locking block as well. 
which interacts with the barrel. With the magazine, you'll want to inspect the feed lips. And in this, for this sake, you could get, you could use some dummy rounds. And I just have a couple here just to check the check the spring tension. You can just see just to give you a small check without using the snap caps to cycle the firearm. My level of readiness when it comes to this particular platform. I, I have no problem going into the future working on this platform again. As I said, coming into this class, I started before even coming into gunsmithing school or even getting a vast knowledge or even having no knowledge on firearms. I started by building polymer 80 kits and the first couple of ones I put together, they had no problems and I was making videos, I was in the Reddit group and it had gotten to a point where people started asking me questions and I didn't even know what I was doing. So that's actually what inspired me to enroll in SDI. So when it comes to this particular platform, I am very prepared to work on this platform. And even with other striker fire um, firearms, because you know, other firearms are different, but again, you know, even before I was in school, I had, I changed, I had a six hour P320. I changed the trigger on that myself before um, being in school. I changed the trigger on my six hour P365. Both of those guns um, have run. I had the six hour P320, the longest of all my firearms. It has never had any failure, any issue of any sort, even after me changing the trigger. And that's really what inspired me to come to SDI again, like I say, because what I was doing was working, but I did not know, I had no knowledge of what I was doing. And I have a respect for firearms, so I did feel it would be necessary to get a knowledge, a nice foundation for a knowledge base if this was something I was going to continue to go into and coming to school really changed. It really changed my life, actually. So. For this week's assignment, we are also asked to do a headspace check and to check the headspace with this platform. We're going to use the nine millimeter go no go gauges. It's very simple with the firearm already fill strip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first place the go gauge inside of the barrel and then place the barrel inside the slide and to see if it locks up with the go gauge. Then I'm going to repeat that with the no go gauge and see if it if the barrel was able to lock with the no go gauge. This is the go gauge. So what I'm going to do is take the barrel you put the go gauge into the chamber. You just let it slide in lightly with your finger. You don't have to apply any pressure or anything like that. Then you put the barrel into the slide and you just lightly press the barrel towards the breech face. Make sure the rim of the go gauge goes under the extractor to get a clear reading. And with that, as you can see from here, it is locked, it is fully closed. And from the top, you can clearly see that it is fully locked with the go gauge. So I'm gonna remove the barrel and remove the go gauge. And I'm gonna take the no-go gauge, place it inside the barrel with the light push. And just as I did before, I'm gonna slide the barrel back slowly. And unlike the, unlike the go gauge, there's not even enough room to get this to go under the extractor and you don't want to apply pressure with the no with the no go gauge but as you can see the barrel is not able to lock 
and it's clear to see. So that shows you that the chamber has the correct head space on this barrel. This concludes my week three assignment for FTH 212 51915. Thank you.